Think about how medicine has evolved over the past decades. Diseases like smallpox have been completely eradicated, while others like HIV AIDS that were once a death sentence are now manageable. From penicillin to organ transplants, so many important discoveries have dramatically changed healthcare. But what's really behind all this progress? The key to all these developments is basic biomedical research. Scientists discover how the cells and molecules in our bodies work, providing the building blocks that lead to new ways to prevent and treat diseases. State-of-the-art scientific research is where true innovation lies and where most significant advances in medicine are drawn from. The speed of science has changed tremendously for the last 10, 20 years. For example, in order to determine our blueprint in each cell of each person, it took more than 20 years. But now, it takes only a day. So the speed is much, much faster now. Many kinds of disruptive technologies have changed medicine tremendously. And I believe it would be basic research that could help those patients suffering from intractable diseases in the future. While some may believe that cures aren't coming fast enough, emerging biological tools and technologies developed within the past 15 years are accelerating science at an unprecedented pace, opening new paths in research that weren't possible a few years ago. One of the most disruptive technologies are induced pluripotent stem cells, referred to as iPS cells. These cells can be created in a lab from adult skin or blood cells and can then be transformed into any other cell type in the body. iPS cells are a new type of stem cells which we generated in 2006 from my skin cell or from your skin cell. Once they become iPS cells, we can expand iPS cells as much as we want. And after expansion, we can convert iPS cells into any types of cells like brain cells, heart cells, blood cells, and so on. So this technology should be very useful in medicine and also in biomedical research. Another major discovery is a gene editing technique called CRISPR, which allows scientists to make changes to a person's DNA by removing, inserting, or replacing specific genes. Together, CRISPR and induced pluripotent stem cells are raising hopes of a completely new way to treat disease. For instance, in an approach called regenerative medicine, scientists can draw blood from a patient with a genetic disease, then they can transform the blood cells into the type of cell affected by that person's disease and use CRISPR to remove the gene causing the disease to see if they can cure it. This can all happen in a research lab without any risk posed to the patient. So many of mankind's worst diseases have no solution today. The only way we're going to change that over the coming decades is by investing in a deeper understanding of human biology and how that goes wrong in the setting of disease. And that takes what we call basic research into how do our cells actually work normally and how does that go awry in the setting of human disease. We're now in a position to decode the three billion pieces of DNA that makes up each one of our genomes. What that means is that in the very near future, everybody will have their code of what makes them them. The challenge then will become, how do you go from knowing what your code is to what your risk for disease might be and how to disrupt that process of disease? And now we can begin to ask, if someone has this mutation, what is the consequence on their own cells? The combination of being able to know your DNA code, make your own cells, and then edit your cells and alter the DNA to determine what's gone wrong has allowed us to both understand human biology and disease at a different level and now use those cells for screening for new drugs that would actually stop the disease in its tracks. It's the ultimate personalized medicine. As with most modern technologies, these new biomedical tools are creating vast amounts of data. The challenge today is being able to decipher the data and make sense of it in a way that can be used to propel science and medicine forward. Basic research is about how and why. Not what happens, we can observe that in other areas of science, but why, how does that happen? That's basic or discovery science. 
with so much information in science today, the rate limiting step isn't what we can measure, but how to make sense out of all the things that we measure every day. And we need computational biology and bioinformatics, people working in statistics, computer science, and math in order to make sense out of all this data. Labs at Gladstone Institutes in San Francisco are leveraging these scientific tools and creating new technologies for the scientific community to one day benefit patients suffering from diseases ranging from heart disease and Alzheimer's to other neurological diseases and immunological disorders. Innovation is really about solving the unknown. And to do that, it takes willingness to take risks, be creative, and be persistent over a long period of time. And with those three attributes, I think we can solve virtually any problem. Unified by a common vision, everyone at Gladstone believes that the best discoveries will come from bringing diverse thoughts, approaches, and people together to tackle scientific challenges in creative ways. Basic biomedical research can ultimately have a profound medical, economic, and social impact. Visit Gladstone.org today to learn more about Gladstone Institutes and how it is using science to overcome disease.